Everybody, it's Tyler here at Chessie Champs, checking in team number 3476. Code Orange coming in from California. I'm here with Jonathan, Megan, and Varun. And we're talking about, I love the aesthetics of this robot, and of course, a great function machine that Code Orange has been building every single year. Uh, you just gotta see how they uh, package all this really super cool. Of course, we'll be following that power cell journey uh, into their uh, intake shooter hopper, climber, all this and more coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. We'd also like to thank Kettering University. Kettering University is where robotic students come for their education. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics, and you can keep going with their BattleBots, VexU, eSports, and FIRST mentorship programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12th, 2021. So starting on this robot, we're going to talk about the intake. Uh, you know, teams have had, you know, a couple years to work on things and everything. So talk to me about uh, your design of this, uh, some of the thought process for it, and uh, how you uh, have iterated throughout the uh, years. Uh, do you want to open it? Cool. So... We actually recently just designed this intake, and we took, we realized that the intake needs to be, our old intake actually was really flexible. Sure. And it didn't really intake the power cells very well. So we decided to really beef it up. We have three, or two steel standoffs right here, and then another standoff right here that are all half inch hex. And we decided to use sprockets this time because we had a lot of problems with the belt stripping with the previous intake. And we also made sure to beef up the pivot right here because we mark forged a bunch of these blocks. And then we have two 1 8 polycarb supports on the sides. So looking at this, was the general design of the intake the same, or is this completely redesigned? Like, I know you said you made it, uh, you know, more rigid and that sort of thing. Was the rest of it es essentially looking the same, though? Yeah, so the rollers are still in the same position. Sure. And the previous intake actually collapsed together, but we realized our robot actually has enough space to stow the size of intake that doesn't have two arms. So what we decided to do was make it all one play so that it would just be more robust. And talking about uh, for the string here, is this something that was added on throughout the competition season? Yes. Like, it, it, you know, it looks like it's like, hey, you know, we're gonna just add a piece out and every time a power cell pops off, that yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> That's what happened, all right, fair enough. Uh, let's keep moving on uh, into your hopper mechanism. Megan's gonna be talking a little bit more about that. Uh, you know, we've seen a few teams with brushes, but mm -hmm. I'd probably say um, it, not something too common. So talk to me about the brushing, and then of course, uh, as you start to index into your robot, talk about more of that process. Yeah, so we went through several different um, designs for our, our car wash and our hopper. Uh, we ended up going with the brush design because we thought that the brushes would help um, prevent a little bit of jamming, as well as making the balls uh, uh, not stick together as much. Um, so we, if you can see, we use it for our car wash and we also use it uh, a few brushes in our hopper design to bring the balls up to our shooter. Uh, is this general structure been kind of the same throughout uh, all of Infinite yeah. Recharge? The hopper has not been changed since uh, 2019 when we first, uh, 2020 when we first built it. Uh, so much of this has been kept the same. We've done some adjustments to make sure the balls are don't jam as much, yeah. um, but the same design has been kept. So I'll ask you in general, uh, why brushes in general, especially, you know, I've, I've seen a few here. I, I don't think it's too common that I've seen them further on in the hopper. So uh, when you're looking at different material choices or different ways to do it, what made you choose brushes? Um, we chose it so it would keep the ball from sticking to each other. Uh, it could prevent it from sticking to each other. Sure. Let's keep moving on. We're going to be talking about as the power cell goes into the shooter as well, uh, talking about uh, the hood process on it, uh, how many different like types of positions are you doing. i uh, love to hear more about, uh, you don't really have too much weight in regards to like a flywheel, that sort of thing too, so I'm interested to hear more about that. So I'll just start from here. We have a 775 Pro driving the feeder wheel, and looking over here at the flywheel, we have four Falcons wow. driving this four-inch flywheel, and it's made of polyurethane. And basically, this allows us to spin up the shooter really, really quickly. When we want to, if we're like playing against defense, we can stop the shooter. And then once we get to the place, it'll just spin up right away. 
And then we have a Neo 550 right here driving the hood. And the Neo 550 is, has a really high RPM. So basically we can adjust for our hood shots really quickly. And these plates are all made of quarter inch. Varun, anything to add in regards to like the programming uh, in the shooter as so, well? Yeah, I just want to like start off by like showing how quick it is. Um, yeah, so if you'll notice, yeah, so you'll see why see our LEDs, it'll turn white when it's like below RPM and then it turns rainbow when it's ready. So you'll just see how quickly we can spin up. Oh yeah, the vision's doing whack stuff because it can't see a target, so it's yeah. like trying to adjust. So do you find that your drive team does use the LEDs as feedback? Yeah, so yeah. Um, especially like it's basically our LEDs are like a debug for a robot. If something's not working, it changes different colors. And so it allows our drivers to like see if something's not working sure. as expected. And so we use our vision so we get distance approximation and then we have a lookup table that interpolates between different set points. So based on our distance, we have a um, our, our hood angle changes and our flywheel speed changes. So our drivers basically, they have a range between the front of the goal and like a little bit in front of the trench. Sure. They can just go park anywhere in between that. And then the robot will automatically um, put, set up the hood and shooter to so that it hits the shot. So that makes it really easy. Our drivers can just go anywhere. Uh, while we're on topic in general programming, that sort of thing, anything else from like uh, sensors or any sort of automation that's in your robot you might want to talk about? So yeah, I want to talk about like, our auto. So um, when we're making autos, everyone knows it's like the thing where we're just constantly redeploying um, redeploying code um, all the time, trying to like make small changes. So we built this GUI that allows to just um, easily um, like just drag and drop points so that we can make an auto. So, and then we can easily upload. We just so this allows us to make an auto redeploy. Uh, we don't have to redeploy code. So sure. we just we just press this button over here, and then it uploads it to the Robo Rio, and we can iterate over autos extremely quickly. So. Let's say I want to move this point a little bit over here. I want to move this over here. And then I want to change the start point. And then I just press this button, and then it would upload to the RoboRio. And then after a couple seconds, the RoboRio would finish processing it. And then we'd be, the bottleneck is positioning the robot for autos, not programming or anything like that. So how often do you actually find yourself doing that? Like, you know, a lot, a lot of teams, I, I've, I've seen a couple, I shouldn't say a lot, a couple of teams have seen this feature, but then they're like, well, we just kind of do the same thing every match. Do you actually find yourself tweaking between matches or anything like that, or um, as you get different alliance partners? So it's like useful for, especially, um, we find that we can like show our GUI sometimes to like other teams, or if we, um, we find that we don't really use it in matches, but like when we're actually making the auto, that's when sure. it's like super useful because like, especially just like having to redeploy, wait like five or seven seconds for a code to upload. And then just being able to see what you're doing, what like, what, like you're changing this point, you know exactly where it's going to be. And then- and, and I'm sure it speeds that process up, yeah. right? That time up of doing all that tweaking as well too. Absolutely. And then we also have like, real-time path feedback so sure. we can see what path the robot's actually driving and then we can make changes based on that so yeah, yeah let's wrap up on this robot talking about your uh, climber on here uh, looks like a multi-stage climber for with some uh, uh, tension springs so tell me a little bit more what goes into it yeah so one of the main things I guess that stands out is that we do not have any bearings or bushings that allow them to slide sure so you can see a lot of the white powder wow. on the climber stages because yeah. we spray this dry lube on it every match pretty much. And we just got some springs right here pulling it up. And our climber is just pretty much really simple. We have a winch or a shaft running through the whole bottom of the robot. And the, there's a rope that spools right here. And actually, we have a ratchet it's pretty simple. You just take out this pin when we want to reset because our climber cannot go up after it goes down. And then we just push this ratchet past the bracket and this allows us to reset the climber. What, as we wrap up, what actually made you want to go with this type of route versus what we see maybe with some other traditional type of multi-stage climbers? Yeah, so we did not have a lot of room on this robot. Yeah. 
and adding bushings would pretty much add an extra like three inches probably. And just having this really compressed, really tight package helped us fit everything together. And the climber's actually really reliable. We've pretty much been climbing every match this competition. Yeah, absolutely. You guys have been doing great out there, of course, here at Chessy Champs. So we wish you best of luck here at the rest of this competition. I can't wait to see what future robots you bring out in uh, future years as well. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Don't just sit in class. Kettering University is the only school in the U.S. that allows you to work as an engineer your first year with their three-month on, three-month off co-op programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12th, 2021. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on students and graduates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.